If you wanna make a million bucks, Apple will pay you right now. But first, you have to find a bug in their private cloud compute platform. In this video, we're talking about the private cloud compute bug bounty and why I think it is not only one of the most interesting pieces of technology, but one of the best bug bounty programs that I've ever seen. Let's dive right in. To talk about this bug bounty, we have to kind of give some context about what private cloud compute is. Private cloud compute is this platform by Apple that is going to be used for things like Apple intelligence, for example, and I'm sure additional projects in the future that will give an individual client, the PCC client, some compute in the cloud that is truly private. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, private cloud compute, that's not possible. Well, again, I don't work at Apple, but there is a world where there is where this is possible by using ARM, the new Realm management extension in the ARM confidential compute spec. If you're not a big computer architecture guy, I'll give you the breakdown of, of what's happening here. As ARM has developed, they have taken some precautions in trying to make their architecture less hackable. Now, when we started in regular computing, we lived in kind of this non-secure security state where basically all we had was execution level zero, which is user mode, and then execution level one, which is the kernel, right? And the kernel is kind of this privileged area of memory execution where you can look into all of the user space memory. And that's kind of what all operating systems right now are based on. And then you have things like execution level two, which you can think of like as like a hypervisor or like system management mode where effectively it has control over multiple kernels. Now, as ARM has expanded their security state with the trust zone architecture, they created another region of memory, another region of execution, a new security state that's called the secure state. And so the secure state can actually be used to run what is called trusted code, to do things that are inherently more sensitive, but that cannot be seen by the non-secure state. And a lot of embedded systems, a lot of crypto routines happen in the secure world that are not able to be seen by the non-secure world. And the only way to exploit this secure world is by having an exploit in the interface between the two. So you reduce the attack surface and the ability to be spied on significantly lower. But the problem here is that the secure state can still see into the code that the non-secure state is running. Now, to make ARM applicable in a cloud computation standpoint, they added this new thing called the Realm security state in the Realm management extension. And the way that realms work is really, really interesting. You have realm level zero and realm level one, where exception level three, which is kind of like, think about the hypervisor in the world of, of uh, cloud computing. It is the OS that is running the other code. There is actually a hardware implementation of memory encryption where the hypervisor at exception level three is not able to look into and see the realm memory. It's not able to see what is happening inside the realms. So you can put private code here inside the realm and the hypervisor is not able to see what is happening there, giving you this idea of private cloud compute. The interesting thing about the RME, the Realm Management Extension, is kind of the basis of all the additions that they've added to the ARM spec to make it more secure. And the, the primary idea there is that you can't make software more secure with more software, right? As you write more software to secure other software, all you're doing is adding lines of code that could also have additional security vulnerabilities. And you get into this weird snowball kind of circular problem where you're not really solving the problem. You're just finding fancy ways to shift the problem around. So with that in mind, the ARM spec uses physical changes to the silicon that disallow you from taking certain actions. So here you have the non the non-secure address space, the secure address space, and the realm address space. And literally inside of the memory controller for the architecture, there are physical rules written in TTL logic and transistor logic that don't allow these access to happen. Like you can't do a read operation from any of these memory maps to a realm memory map. And by doing this, it adds a lot of inherent security to the architecture that, you know, just the regular non-secure ring one, ring zero system would, would have. And this is actually the reference implementation within the ARM realm management extension paper. If you guys can just go ahead and read this real quick, it only takes a few minutes to understand what's going on here. 
Now, obviously this is extremely complicated. You have a series of peripherals from memory controllers to memory encryption tables to memory encryption IDs to authenticated debug access ports and a bunch of other systems that have to exist inside of a cloud compute node to enable this to happen. So I'm not saying that it's not complicated. I'm not saying that I understand 100% of all of this of how it works. But the technology is there. So a world where we do have compute that is fully private and can be verified, can be attested to be private is on the horizon. And so obviously Apple has been working on this for a very long time. This is like cutting edge cloud compute. And so as a result, the SEER team, the Apple security engineering and architecture team is looking for people to find vulnerabilities in it. And that kind of brings up the topic of today's video. And the reason I think this is so exciting is they are openly asking everybody and anybody, hence the purpose of this video, to learn about the private cloud compute and perform their own independent verification of our claims. The claims being that through this architecture, they're able to have a publicly verifiable attestation service where a client can see that the private cloud compute is running the secure cloud OS. It can attest to that and that you can send prompts to the cloud compute that are private and get private responses without any of your data being leaked. And so they invite the world to come and try to hack their server right now. And the way they do it is actually really interesting. So they, they kind of lay out the details of what they want people to find in this guide. I'm not gonna go super into this. If you're able to leak personal data and violate the personal security uh, boundary of the cloud compute, or if you're able to get privileged runtime access from a realm, basically being able to hop the realm to non-realm security boundary. And again, I'm just assuming it's based on ARM confidential compute. They may have their own custom Apple Silicon version of this, but this is like the cutting edge technology for cloud compute that's private right now. So it's probably based on this at least. If you're able to break this boundary from a realm to a non-realm, they want to know about that. And also, and also they want to make sure that you can verify that the private cloud compute node is running that the code that they say it is. If you can break any of these boundaries, Apple will pay you. Now, what's really interesting is right now, if you have an app, uh, if you have an iOS device that has a development license, you can go and download this thing called the virtual research environment. And what it actually is, is they just kind of take one PCC node, one private cloud compute node, and make it so that it's fully virtualized and you can run it locally on your Mac. And you can use this right now and go try to find vulnerabilities in it completely for free. And even better, they are offering the source code to a ton of the components. Like for example, the cloud attestation project, which is what's being used to uh, tell a client what kind of code is being ran. The Thimble project, which is the actual daemon that runs on your iPhone that will reach out and check the attestation. The log software that runs on the private cloud compute node. If you send an AI prompt, to the service, can any of that information be seen by the logging daemon? And then also a ton of other tooling that they use to do the actual vulnerability research process. All of that is, is available right now, open source on GitHub. You can go download this code, you can run the VRE, the virtual research environment, and try to find bugs yourself. And this is the best part. This is where it all comes together. If you're able to violate any of these boundaries, so again, uh, data disclosure, compromise of the system via requests, or getting further access from a privileged standpoint, the Maximum payout for a remote attack on the system that gives arbitrary code execution is a million dollars. Apple will pay you a million bucks right now if you can provably find this bug. Now, this is the maximum bounty. If you get some variant of this where maybe it's not a full code execution, maybe it's from a different you know realm, uh, you know, it's less money, but still they will pay you a ton of money to find a bug in their security stack, and they're gonna give you the tools to do it. Listen, before I get all the, oh, Apple bad, or oh, low level corporate shill in the comments, give me a break. Like, I don't like Apple intelligence. I don't like cloud computation. I like all of my code to be running up, up near me, nice and close where I can prove that it is literally running there, no one else can see it and maintain my own privacy. But I also acknowledge that the Corporate trends of the world with the Apples and the Microsofts and the Googles are inevitable. And I, as one individual person who wears a Rhode Island hoodie and cuts all of his hair off, has literal, like almost no control over that. So in that world that I live in, I have to choose one. Um, and it seems to me that Apple is not only architecting the cloud compute, the safest with, with the most privacy and security in mind, but also they are literally giving you the source code, the keys to the kingdom to go and try to prove their model yourself. So 
I, I just think this is a cool concept. I think that everyone should have an open mind about this and, and at least go play with their code and, and see what's going on in there. Anyway, I just, I wanted to make this video because I think it's a really interesting case in point about the, the not only the future of cloud compute, I personally think that the architecture that ARM has presented here with the Realm extensions and the ability to use hardware to control the security of applications and making sure that a malicious hypervisor can't look into private cloud compute instances, but also Apple's use of that architecture and then trying to make sure that the industry can look in and verify their claims to build their trust back. And I think this means that Apple is aware that it, trust is kind of weaning in this world of do all of your compute in the cloud, right? So I think it's a good move by Apple. I think it's really interesting. I personally will be doing some research on this and, and seeing what kind of cool stuff I can find. Um, if I find the million dollar bug, probably not going to tell you, uh, but I, I don't know. I think it's a cool, a cool concept. Anyway, if you think it's cool as well, or just want to see more videos like this, hit that sub button. I appreciate it. And then go check this video out that YouTube thinks you will enjoy just as much. We'll see you over there. Take care.